You hear that crackling, Steve? Yeah. That's my crackle tune. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. What's going on? It's your boy Jed, and welcome back to another video of the RSX. Uh, finally, a video of the RSX, I should say. <laughs> so in today's video, I'm going to show you the best way to take sound deadening out of your car. Some people use heat, like really high heat, like torch, like torches and stuff, to kind of like melt sort of the uh, sound deadening uh, material and then take it off. But I feel like you're working harder that way. And then the other option is to just muscle it off by getting like a, a scraper or something and just or a crowbar or whatever and just 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 hack away at it but you're just you know you're working harder not smarter i'm all about working smarter not harder so yeah i'm gonna show y'all the best way to do it by the way i'm at steve's place and i think he's asleep or something because he didn't answer his uh, the facebook messenger thing that i usually talk to him with uh, so i'm gonna have to call him here in a minute but i wanted to show y'all this see those Maybe see some you maybe you can see it over here. Oh there you go. Did you see that? K-Tune? Those are the K-Tune tie rod set that I that I got a while back. When the one with the spherical end links and inverted. I had them done at a shop because me and Steve tried to do it one day and it just kicked our ass. So yeah, my car's uh, alignment is all good now. The toe is finally perfect. The caster, the, the caster and camber are good. Uh, from how I set it up. Although I do plan on getting more camber and more caster with mods I'm, I'm thinking about getting in the future. I'm not sure yet uh, And I'm not sure when I'll do it too, but as it is right now, it's perfect I had it done at a, a place called Backyard Auto. They're actually pretty well known here in Houston So shout out to Backyard Auto for making it happen All right guys, so this is the real way you need uh, some dry ice the amount you need really varies on your car and how much you want to do. And ideally, you want some of this isopropyl alcohol. Unfortunately, all the HGVs I went to, they were out because, you know, thanks pandemic. And this is all we have left. So we, we're just going to have to make do without that. Put this dry ice in a bucket, have a sledge or something heavy, crush it up, and then mix the alcohol in it. And then from there, you just pour it on where you see each sound bending. The extreme cold will separate it from the metal and then you could use like a chisel or something to, to scrape off the sound end. Let's get to it. Now just pour that bitch in. I've never done this, so I have no idea what to expect, to be honest. That crackling you hear, assuming that the camera's picking up, is basically the sound ending just separating itself from the, from the metal. Interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't do a good job at crushing some of these, so... <laughs> you want to use the alcohol. Something about the alcohol makes the cold seeped into the actual like material itself. This way you're just using the pure temperature to do the job. So it'll be a little bit faster if you use the uh, alcohol method. There we go. See, right there, that's. Hmm. That actually went a lot smoother than I expected, to be honest. <laughs> I was expecting this to be one of those fail videos. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The rattle trap is gonna be even rattlier. Alright guys, so we're almost done with the center part. That was five minutes. Yeah. Here's one of the bigger pieces that came off. It, after we're done with all this, we're gonna take all the pieces, like scavenge all the pieces and weigh them. To see uh, how much uh, we lost with this. There's a chance I'm gonna have to go back to HGB to 
to get one more bag because I think I underestimated how much I needed. All right, so we did this middle part. Now we're gonna go to the sides, but I'm gonna try to do this one first because it has the most ice, and hopefully I can get it out. It's been kind of sitting for a little longer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You see that? Oh man, that's like one solid piece. Almost. I think there's like a section here and there that is still on the metal, but. Ah, nice. And then after this, looks like we just got the back seat area. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, there's more under the actual like seats and I don't really feel like taking out the carpet, the seats and all that to get to those. It's like, it's whatever right now. We'll get to that in the future, but for now, this will do. I think if you get seats or something, you know, while you're in there, oh, well, that's you should idea. do it. That is a good idea, actually. If you can't get dry ice, like you can't find any, another way I've seen people do it is the can of a uh, air duster that they do upside down. That works, I've seen videos of people doing that. The thing is, there's only so much of that in a can. You're gonna have to buy a lot of cans to do a whole car. They do sell, I think they call it can of freeze or something, but it's like, I don't know if they sell them at like Home Depot or anything, but I've seen them online. Cracking, that's for sure. For these angle edges that Steve is doing right now, kind of tricky because you either have to hold the ice against it or use what I mentioned earlier about the upside down air duster or, or freeze spray or whatever. If you have to hammer and chisel it off, then do it. But if you do dry ice and alcohol right, like the mixture and the amount, all that, these, these would really literally just come off by themselves. All right, guys, so me and Steve had to stop by H-E-B and get another bag of dry ice because that one bag was just not enough. I think that'll make it a lot faster. It's really fine. Yeah, that's what I was uh, going for this time. Taking the time to uh, make it all powdery and stuff. Oh, that came off a lot easier. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of this uh, sound ending is connected to this like adhesive glue stuff they use on the chassis. So that stuff I'm gonna have to like pry, like scrape off. But everything else. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, guys. So we just finished taking out all the sound editing that we can find. Um, it's not that hard, as long as you have enough dry ice, and I do recommend getting the alcohol. So here's how it looks like. Yeah, I got a little bit of rust in there, but that's from like water leakage and stuff. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much done. Well, it is done up to a certain point, because like, I think I mentioned it already, but under the front, all the way to the, like the, the foot wells of the car, there's more sound editing. But we are not about to go do all that removing just to get sound editing out. So we're probably gonna do that at a later time. How much you need depends on your car. Regardless, it was this is literally the best way to take care of sound editing. But yeah, right here is all the chunks of sound editing. We're about to go weigh it just to see, uh, just to get a rough estimate of how much weight we lost because of that. All right, guys, we got it on the scale. It's gonna be reading eight pounds. I don't know why this thing's kind of messing up or something, but supposedly we've lost eight pounds with all that, which is reasonable. To be honest, I was expecting more, but it does make sense realistically. My car is not that big, so there's not a lot of sound editing in it. A lot of the bigger cars, will, you'll lose like 20 pounds. There's definitely a lot more of that to be shed under the uh, driver and passenger seat. So yeah, guys, that's the most efficient way of removing sound deadening. If you found this video informative, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. You know, leave a comment if you want. Uh, just, yeah, that's about it. Follow me on Instagram, follow Steve on Instagram, and we'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.